The Vivo Y2080 is a mid-entry level offering built last carrying one of the largest battery capacity under this segment. Over the last few weeks, I've used the device for good measures, and despite some expected niggles after those weeks, this is what I really think about the Vivo Y2080. Is it good enough to be your next daily driver? Let's find out. I would be lying if I say the design is not appealing on Vivo's phone. The Y28 stands no exceptions and it boosts an eye-catching look without a doubt. It is one of those smartphone designs you wouldn't want to use a case on. I mean, if you were someone whose preference is a gorgeous design, you would definitely grab this phone out of the bunch. It felt light for one hand usage and was comfortable to hold weighing 199 grams. Plus, the back panel didn't get smushed too often despite the glossy surface. Talking of the build, there is a plastic frame in between that has a metallic glossy finish matching the color. You get an IP64 rating on here for added dust resistance with the 6 while the 4 denotes a basic splash resistance. For buttons and ports, the volume rocker and the power buttons are on the right side of the device. Meanwhile, the left side has the dual nano SIM card tray. It's an hybrid SIM slot which means you get to use one SIM card with a micro SD card or two SIMs without an SD card. On the bottom though, we have one of two speakers, USB Type-C port with an highly appreciated 3.5mm audio port. At first, I was trying to find out where the other loudspeaker was. Apparently, it's found on the call earpiece, which isn't my favorite placement for a second stereo speaker. The Vivo Y28 is not that device with an AMOLED display. Now, I understand there is no compromise on the design front, but the display side is not that appealing. We all know how AMOLED panels have become quite a norm in this segment with every other brand but Vivo has decided to stick with an IPS LCD panel here instead, that too at 90Hz refresh rate. So you definitely miss the 120Hz vibes on the Vivo Y28. Speaking of the actual display quality, it is just decent, not that sharp to be precise, as it got an HD plus resolution only. You still can enjoy movies and reels as you'll become used to with this resolution. And to contemplate that, you get a stereo speaker setup which kind of sounds sharp at full volume. So a moderate level sounds just fine. Meanwhile, the sunlight readability is pretty good with a thousand nits of HBM, while the typical brightness stays at 750 nits. Now getting to the performance side of things, the Vivo Y28 can only cater well to those basic users. You get a Helio G85 processor on here which is surely not the best in this segment, paired with 8 gigs of onboard RAM and 256 gigs of storage space, selling for 299,000 Naira which is about $180. Now that actually puts it in the same price bracket as the Redmi Note 13 and Samsung's Galaxy A15. 5G, leaving you to wonder which is actually a better deal in terms of overall performance and value for money. And if you were to ask me, yeah, I'll definitely go with um with either the Redmi Note 13 or Samsung Galaxy A15 5G over the Vivo Y28. During my time with the Vivo Y28, I could see the phone getting slow and lagging once in a while. I know this is common in this price range, but the Helio G85 just doesn't fit right for the price. So the Vivo Y28 from my perspective is just for mere social media usage, multimedia consumption, basic gaming and good battery life. But that's basically not all. On the camera front is sports a dual camera setup, a 50 megapixel plus 2 megapixel for depth. But I'll rule out the second lens as it is practically useless. So as a Vivo phone, I expected it to have good for the buck camera quality and it performed just fine. Basically, just fine camera. The one cool factor of the Vivo Y28 for me was the 6000 mAh battery capacity which can be relied on for 2 days easily on moderate usage. On top of that, the 44 watt flash charge support can top it up from 0 to 100% in 1 hour and 40 minutes approximately, which doesn't sound the fastest by any means but it is a big battery so it is what it is. Right out of the box, the Vivo Y28 runs on FunTouch OS 14 based on Android 14. It is known for being nice and simple, offering features for personalization and performance. Aside from themes, you can choose between different graphics and animation for things like charging, display, notifications, etc. You can even add up to 8 gigs of extended virtual memory on the settings if that works for you. It also offers multi turbo technology with game mode for better performance and optimized gameplay. The Vivo Y28 ticks the boxes for looks and design without any doubt. It got all for someone who is all about going for a good looking smartphone. However, Vivo's choice of continuing the Helio G85 processor for the Y28 selling price is not just 
justifiable and you only get a 90 hertz lcd panel here which is not that great if you are to pick at the competition like the redmi note 13 or samsung galaxy a15 5g as earlier mentioned in this review it is not that bad or anything and can cater well to basic users but again the phone surely is not the best package you can get at a price to performance ratio 